My name is Alex T, working with the Tissue Biomechanics Lab at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, and I just wanted to thank you for watching this presentation on predicting macroscale bone growth with and without mechanical loading data. A well-known phenomenon about bone is that its structure adapts in response to the mechanical loads it experiences to optimize itself for said loads. There have been numerous efforts to explain these changes in bone morphology using predictive mathematical models, but to date, most have focused on microscale remodeling in response to local damage, while few have evaluated the role of similar models in predicting macroscale bone changes. And such an application of predictive models would be particularly interesting because the degree to which mechanical loads affect growth relative to genetics is not clear. And therefore, the objective of this work was to adapt macroscale bone remodeling principles to evaluate macroscale bone growth given their mechanical loads. The methods for this research started with a data set from our lab that includes CT scans for the proximal phalanx, or P1, of three foals at multiple time points during early growth. We use these CT scans to generate subject-specific geometries of the P1 bone to measure and predict bone growth. We also use the scans to generate subject-specific segmentations and then generate finite element models simulating P1 loading during trotting. And more specifically, we use normative joint contact forces to calculate the strain energy density rate within the P1 bone, as this is a common metric that has been well supported in predicting microscale bone changes. To identify a region of interest and make comparison, consistent comparisons between bone cross sections despite continued growth, we identified the axial CT slice containing the nutrient foramen at each time point, and we then used the CT slice as a point for consistent a consistent datum in measuring radial growth at different time intervals. To measure growth of the bone within each CT slice containing the nutrient foramen, we first segmented the cortical bone before finding the centroid of that section. To calculate the growth between the starting point T1 and some future time interval T2, we started by aligning the centroid within the two segmented scans, and from there we calculated the distance of each periosteal voxel from the centroid and express those distances as a line based on its anatomical location around the bone. By subtracting the centroid distances between T1 and T2, we were able to calculate the ground truth, ground truth growth over that time interval. At the same cortical points used to measure these distances, we also calculated the strain energy density rate as this would be included in our predictive mechanical models. These periosteal points were used because the periosteum contains the highest number of osteocytes that are responsible for sensing the mechanical environment and initiating a response within the bone. For the growth models, we developed two models that incorporated themes from microscale prediction models. These models predicted the outward radial growth, G, at each periosteal point, I. Model 1 did not include any mechanical loading data and was instead only dependent on the initial cortical thickness and the prediction time interval, whereas Model 2 incorporated the strain energy density rate values as well as a mechanical signal threshold that was again adapted from microscale models. In our results section, we can see a sample prediction for both model one and model two. The graph in the top left shows the growth in millimeters with model one in red, model two in blue, and both models generally following within one voxel of the ground truth growth shown in black. A different way to visualize these models is by overlaying them on segmented CT slices. Here we see the same CT slice at time point two, which is the shape that we're trying to predict, as well as the original slice shown outline shown in by the yellow line laid on top. And as we can see, both model one and model two do an excellent job of predicting the ultimate growth. And we can see more by looking at these results in aggregate that show that the RMSE for both prediction models is around 0.4 millimeters, and that there was no statistically significant difference between these prediction approaches. Moreover, the median errors for both approaches were well within the spatial resolution of our CT scanner at 0.76 millimeters. So in conclusion, from these findings, we showed that we can predict bone growth using strain energy density rate, but these data had little influence on model predictions of our periosteal apposition. For these foals living at baseline activity levels, this may suggest that genetics are in fact the more influential factor on bone growth than mechanics. So next steps for this study include repeating our methods now on rigorously exercised foals to see if the higher mechanical loads they experience become more important in determining their bone growth. 
And in summary, the significance of the study, we ultimately showed that diaphyseal bone acquisition seems insensitive to mechanical loading and may instead have a greater reliance on genetics for determining growth. Thank you kindly for listening and feel free to contact our lab with any questions.